Hi, welcome back to Mr. Stewart's lessons. At, in my previous lesson, I showed you how to add a static text to your game, a game over screen. Today, I'm going to show you how to add dynamic text, that is a score counter. Let me show you what we have so far. I've got a thing where if I shoot a cherry by pressing F, it destroys the bananas. And if I run into a banana, I will disappear and I'll get a game over screen. If you've been following along, you have this too, but if you haven't, that's okay. All you have to do is go to Mr. Stewart's lessons underneath lesson 14. You'll find a demo lesson, download that, and you can do this lesson as well. So if you need to, go download the lesson and unzip it and open the game, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay. Well, right now, what I have is um, bananas that, I mean, cherries that shoot the banana, that destroy the bananas when I shoot them from my ship. Um, what I'd like to do is up around here, I'd like to have a score counter that adds one point every time I shoot a banana. So, just as before, when I made a game over text actor, I'm going to make another actor, another game over. So I'm going to go to Actor, I'm going to create a new subclass, and I'll call it Counter with a capital T, I mean C, of course, just as we always do. And just as before, I'm not going to give it an image. So I want you to create a counter object, just as we did, uh, just as I did, uh, with no image. Okay, if you've done that, we're going to open up the counter code window. Okay, and we're going to create a similar image that's going to uh, create text just as we did in the game over screen. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to type import java.awt.color. So you know from before, this is we always do this when we're creating text. This is so we can use the basic colors that Java recognizes. So uh, first go and add that up at the top of your counter code window. Okay, now we're going to create a variable to keep track of the score. That's just going to be a simple integer variable. So I'll type int score equals zero. So we're going to add that in. Obviously later on we're going to add to this every time we the score goes up. So, I'm actually going to put my set image command right inside the act. It different from the game over. In the game over, we only did it in the constructor because it only needed to happen once. But with the score counter, we're going to have to keep updating it as the score goes up. So I'm going to go inside the act method. I'm going to do control space and I'll find set image. And I'm going to type new green foot image. Okay, so this is something you've done before. And always remember your semicolons at the end. Okay, now I'm going to have to put my text in there. So I'm going to write score colon, then a space, then a close quote. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to have to do um, adding text. We're going to have to concatenate text is the fancy word for it, which is put two pieces of text together. And so uh, this is we're going to write score, and then I'm going to write uh, plus, and then I'm going to put score. This is adding in the score variable in place of the text. Um, fortunately Java is smart enough that it'll automatically turn it into a string variable. Um, some other programming languages won't do that. So this is the text we're doing. Now I have to put how big I want it. Uh, 48 was how big we wanted the game over screen. That's a little big for this so I'm gonna make it a little smaller. I'm gonna make it, um, I'll make it 24 pixels high. Oops, that should have been a semicolon. I mean a, a comma, not a period. 
Okay, then I'm going to put color. Let's make it a little more interesting color than white. Let's make it green. I'll do color.green. That's the foreground color. And color.black. That's the background color. So this is what you're going to put in right now. Add that. And if you compile it, you'll see there's, there hopefully will be no syntax errors. If there are, see what might have gone wrong. So right now, just to show you what's going to happen, if I close it, I can add this in right now, say up here. And if I'll run it, it'll say score zero. Not very useful because it doesn't update right now if I uh, actually hit something. So I need to actually update it when I shoot a banana. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a method called add score. So I'll call it public void add score. And so you're going to add this in, type public void add score. All we're doing is we're adding one to the score. The simplest way to do that is type score and then two plus signs. Score plus plus just means add one to the score. So add that in right now, pause it and do that. Okay, so I'll close it. And just to show you what happens here, if I add this in and I run it, if I click here, um, one of the methods here is actually add score. Um, And if I run void add score, you'll see it goes up. But of course, that's not how I want to do it. I wanted to actually add a score when a cherry hits a banana. That's what I'd like to do. The hard part here is the cherry knows when it hits the banana, but the score counter doesn't know that. And so the cherry has to actually access or talk to the banana. And the only way to do it, well, there's more than one way to do it, actually, but the easiest way, I think, to do it is to go through the space world that they're both in. So I'm going to open the score counter of the space world. I mean, not the score counter, sorry, the code editor of the space world. What I'm going to do first, I'll create a variable for the, I'm going to create a variable for the counter, but I'm not going to do it down here in the prepare method. I'm going to do it up here at the top, and I'm going to do it for a specific reason because I need to be able to access that and get at it from another method inside here. So I'm going to write counter, counter equals new, new counter. So that's just creating, this is the same thing we did down here when we created a new pie ship or a new banana. So I'm creating a variable call of the counter class, uh, the counter uh, class of called counter and what it represents is the new counter that I've created. So I want you to add that right now. Okay. Now, uh, let's go down here since we just created this, let's actually add this into the game. So up at the top, uh, up at, in the prepare method down here, I'm going to actually add this into the game. So I'm going to say add object. And the variable I created is called counter to represent it. So I'll say counter. Um, I'm going to add it at um, about a hundred over and forty down. That way it'll fit. So X is a hundred, Y is forty. Okay. So this is going to add this into the game. So come down here to the prepare method and put in add object counter a hundred comma forty. Okay. Uh, I'm going to close this for a sec and we'll sh just to see what happens here. Right. It looks like a just a foot right now, but once I run the game, it'll actually turn into a score counter, but still doesn't do what we need it to do. We still need a way for the cherries to be able to access it 
from space. So I'll open up the space code window again. So this is, we're gonna use some real object-oriented programming here. What I want to do is create a method in the space that gives the counter to the cherry so it can do something with it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a method here and I'm going to call it public that's that it's accessible to other things counter counter is what it returns is the kind of thing it returns and the method will be called get counter and open and close curly brackets as always so what we're going to do is we're going to hand the counter over to whatever actor or method asks for it and in this case I'm gonna so um, and all I have I'm gonna use the return method the return just means take something that a particular class has or a particular method has and give it to something else so I'm gonna say return counter this is gonna give it to whatever place whatever other thing runs it okay so no syntax errors there. Now the people, the actor that's going to need to get the counter is the cherries. So I'm going to open up the cherries. I'm going to move that up here uh, so I can see it better. Now over here, this is the place where it actually hits the bananas and destroys it. Uh, you'll see actor banana equals get one intersecting object banana dot class. It's looking for a banana to hit. Um, if it has in fact hit one, then the banana actor won't be null, and so uh, it's going to do what it does when it removes the when it hits the banana. So you'll see world my world equals get world my world remove object banana and my world remove object this. This means this gets rid of the banana and this gets rid of the cherry. We want them to both be destroyed. But now what we need to do is we need to do another thing. We, we need to do, before we actually remove the cherry, what we need to do is we need to add to the score before it disappears. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create another variable, another variable that's going to represent uh, the world. But this in this case, we need the specific, well, not just any world, but the specific world we have, which is the space class of world. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type space, which is a kind of variable, the kind of variable in this case representing the space over here, right? Um, and then equals, and this is called typing a variable. It's taking a certain type of variable and turning it into another type of variable. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type space in parentheses, and you can do this with any kind of variable, my world. And it's going to turn the, oh, space, I'm sorry, space, I forgot to do the type of variable, space equals space my world. So what this does is it creates a variable called space of the space type, and then it takes the my world, which we've already gotten up here, and turns it into the space type and puts it in there. That means now we can get at the space that's uh, up, up that encloses us, and that means we can get at the cherry that's inside it. Now we're going to do something really cool. I'm going to type space, period, and then I'll hit control space. And you'll notice that among the methods that's in that space is the get counter method. It gets the counter that I'm look that I'm looking for, so I can do something with it. Okay. And now that I have the count, oh, and I want to say that the counter is equal to space.getCounter. So this gets the counter and puts it, oh, and I have to create a variable type, create variable type counter. So I'm creating counter, counter equals space.getCounter. So this is creates a variable called counter of the type counter and it reaches into space which we got up here and gets the counter from there so we can put it in there okay and now now that we have this counter variable I can use all the methods that are in the counter so I'll type counter 
period, and then I'll hit control space. And you'll notice that the method we have available now is add score, the one we created in the counter variable. This is going to add to the score of the counter variable, which will then add, which will then automatically change on the image. So you're going to do space, space equals space my world. Counter, counter equals space dot get counter that gets the actual counter from the space that's up above us. Then we're going to do counter dot add score. That's going to add to the score every time I hit a banana. I'll compile it. There's no syntax errors. Okay. Now I'll compile the whole world and I'm going to run it. Make sure there's no bananas really near me. Good. So I'm going to run it. Now here's my score. I'm going to fire a cherry and my score goes up. Fire another cherry and my score goes up again. And now we have a dynamically operating score counter. And now we have a pretty much functioning game if we, you come back, we might find some ways to make it fancier, but we do have a complete functioning game. Thanks for coming to Mr. Stewart's lessons.